Hello and welcome to AV Cyberactive. Hope everybody is having a lovely day. Today we're going to go to another question that is being most asked in cybersecurity interviews. That is, what is boot froze versus dictionary and password stay at spray attacks? Let's go through the definitions of them one by one and then we'll try to understand them a bit deeper. Beginning with the first one, that is brute force attack. Let's go through the definition first. So this is an attack in which cyber criminals utilize trial and error tactics to decode passwords or PIN numbers or any kind of form of login data by leveraging automated software to test large quantities of possible combination. So what's your takeaway from here? So your takeaway is the ones in highlight in orange and that is trial and error and trying in large quantity beginning with the first one that is brute force attacks and how it works. All right, so we got an attack which is using a system to attack a user so for brute force attack it's a simple brute force attack occurs when the hacker tries to guess a user's login credential uh, manually without using any software and he tries it using multiple password or username combinations multiple times so you see these attacks are kind of very simple because many people use very weak passwords as shown over here like password 123 1234 uh, where they do not follow uh, good password hygiene uh, such as using the same password or multiple on multiple platforms now these passwords you see can easily be guessed by hackers by doing just minimal i mean minimal recon from their side uh, such as guessing their birthdays favorite favorite sports team or even name of some some of their acquaintances right so that's how brute force attack is carried out all right so we have our attacker once again using a machine to try to password spray now the basics of password spraying attack involves a threat actor in this case using a single common password against multiple accounts or the same application you know you see this avoids the account lockouts which are generally detected by your systems or your IDS IPS applications that typically occurs when an attacker is trying to brute force into a single account trying many passwords so if you just try using the sim single password and try spraying it on different users with the same password that way you can avoid detection right and password spraying is particularly effective against businesses that participate in password sharing so never use the same password all right and now i'd like to explain dictionary attack now in the dictionary attack the attacker tries to utilize a word list and hopes that the user's password is a commonly used password in this case we are taking an example of test dictionary and password which are like very common word list found in the dictionary there can be many others like password let me in i love you or one two three four five six but modern systems would easily be able to recognize this and not not let users use such weak passwords so in this case you would see that the attacker is trying to use the dictionary attack of most commonly used passwords to get into the system or masquerade as a user and then try to attack the target system to get leverage so one of those passwords may just pass through the system if the user is using a dictionary password and then ends up giving in the attacker full control of the system i hope that was clear now this video wouldn't be complete if i don't explain also how to mitigate or the best practices how we can defend against a dictionary brute force or any type of password spray attack okay uh, i've got a few pointers so i'll try to go through them one by one let's go through the first one that is slowing down repeated logins now you see this is the simplest countermeasure that is available because an end user is unlikely to notice a 0.1 second delay while logging in have you ever noticed when you log into a system and it would just lock you out if you um, or if it, it tried to slow you down and would give you a cool down or a timeout until you can try once again after repeated password attempts failure so that is a way to slow down repeated logging next one that is force captchas 
after multiple login failed. You see, while a user could have simply forgotten the password and can be used, which can, uh, he, they use for the account, this will help slow down the attacker's attack significantly. Uh, you know, this is a great deterrent method as modern CAPTCHA systems are very difficult to defeat with computer systems. CAPTCHA is these scribbly words that you see sometimes you go to a uh, website, which is very annoying, I know, but many of the CAPTCHAs need manual inputs in order to be resolved. That is frustrating for humans, but trust me, that is for your own safety. Lock accounts, another good option. This is even better when a system can be configured to lock out an account after a specified number of failed login attempts. So you see many websites will trigger this additional protection for accounts with repeated bad username and password in case you want to try that. And in some extreme examples, for example, your Android or your iPhone will self-destruct or wipe all its data if there are 10 incorrect entries are made. So you can take these up to that extreme level. All right, can't deny this one. Refresh passwords. This is a very interesting one because you see modern systems typically require the user to cycle passwords regularly. And most of the corporate environments would ask you to do it every 60, 90, or 30, or 45 days as the uh, compliance requirement might, might be. So you see the rationale behind this is an attacker who's trying to brute force you against using a complex password, something, considering the fact that the attacker already got your password. But if you keep rotating the password every so often, the attacker would need to do their reconnaissance again to get your new password. That is what makes refreshing passwords again a powerful tool to uh, or a defense against password or dictionary or password spray attacks. And the final one, monitor for anomalies. This is where your automated tools come in. So finally, uh, a security conscious uh, organization should be monitoring the user for user accounts for anomalies like uh, logins from an uh, unrecognized location or high risk countries or an unknown device or based on attributes. You can also use ZTNA, Zero Trust Network, so you can block devices which are not recognized after repeated login failures. Now, in a staffed a security operations center can also detect these events in real time and quickly forward to locking down the system by blocking either the IP address, uh, contacting the user, or disabling the user if the user is a privileged user. I hope I was able to explain that. Now you see your quest for knowing the difference between password spray, dictionary, and brute force attack shouldn't stop here. You should be exploring more to get more knowledge. I'll link some down below uh, the so that you can expand your knowledge and you would have to keep studying because new type of attacks keep getting discovered every day as attackers are keep trying to get into to the system with the newest technology that is available and use different tactics to achieve their goal. All right, and that was about explaining the difference between the dictionary, password attack, and brute force attack. I hope this I was able to help you with explaining it with just the basics of how these work at the very core level. And at the very least, share this video with your family and friends whom you would think would benefit by using this video. And subscribe and comment if you want more comments like these. Your support keeps me motivated to more make more videos like these. Alright? Alright, with that I'll end the video and I hope you have a good day ahead. Bye now.